and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Sometimes I do forget what day it is. Um, where, look, we've got Fog of War today in the form of Lavender in the Fog by GDC. And this feels a very appropriate puzzle um, for me to do after yesterday's puzzle, um, which was Dorlier's incredible um, zipper line construction. And I mentioned in, in at the start of yesterday's video that I had done a video involving zipper lines, but that it was sort of in my holiday stash for in case uh, an unfortunate event befalls me and I can't record a video on a day. And it was by GDC. And then I felt guilty because I, I don't know when that video will appear. But anyway, this has been recommended and this is by GDC. So I'm going to put everything right. I'm going to do a zipper line puzzle by GDC with Fog of War. And that is fantastic. Uh, and I will read you the rules of this one in a minute, which are, they're, they're, well, they're, they're very, they're very interesting, actually. And if you've never seen Fog of War Sudoku before, you are in for a treat. This is this amazing sort of computer solving development where, for example, if I was to identify what this digit was and I put it in the grid, it will clear the fog from the surrounding cells. So we'd learn more about how this line works. Um, and we go from there. What it does mean is that you could cheat because you could just type in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine into this cell. One of them will be correct and it will clear the fog. That is very much not the idea. Uh, GDC will have designed this so that we we can use logic to, do, to, to learn about the digits and we have to earn, uh, earn our clearance of the fog. Um, now, what do I have to tell you about? Loads, loads of news going on at the moment around the channel. The first is that our, we, we do have a Fog of War Kickstarter coming. So if you if you try this puzzle and you enjoy it or you've ever tried Fog of War before and you've enjoyed it, we have something really cool coming out. Next Tuesday, this Kickstarter launches the, the page. There is a pre page we, pre we prepare that goes up on Kickstarter um, that 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 goes live before the campaign goes live. That may even be up now. If it is, I will try and remember to put a link on the screen. Um, or you might be able to search for it on Kickstarter. <laughs> uh, but it's very exciting. We, we really are um, buzzing about what's coming. And that, anyway, next Tuesday is the launch date. So look out for that. Um, we're also streaming next Tuesday, aren't we? Which we're, we're streaming this game that's been recommended to us called Chance of Sonar. And I, um, I was speaking to Mark about this earlier. Mark, Mark's very much looking forward to this one. He, he's always a bit reticent about computer games. Um, but uh, we're told that this one involves some sort of linguistics. You have to um, work out how languages work or something. And that's what Mark's degrees in. So I think he, I think he's very confident. We'll see how, we'll see how all this goes next Tuesday evening, 10 o'clock UK time. We'd love to have your, uh, your company if you have time, uh, or, and inclination indeed to share it with us. Um, and the only other thing to mention is over on Patreon, we've got my mammoth solve of Crux by Jay Dyer, two hours, 42 minutes of Sudoku mayhem um that that video will go on the channel uh, in the coming days as well so if you but if you can't wait it's it's on patreon right now and we have our monthly reward for november which is demono's um story sudoku hunt um lots of you have been enjoying that so that is available right now and i've got some birthdays to announce too so i'm going to do those three birthdays today we'll start with camille who's turned 18 today and I know this because your your parents, um, Cecile and Xavier, wrote to us over there in Toulouse. I think are Liverpool playing Toulouse tonight. Um, I think I think they are. I have to confess. I hope Liverpool win. I'm sorry about that if you're Toulouse fans. Um, but anyway, Camille spent three years in, over in Canada, which was where she learned English and discovered cracking the cryptic. Um, but now. Uh, Camille is, has gone to Paris to study maths. So Camille, well done. Um, and I hope that goes brilliantly. And I hope, hope, of course, that you have an enormous amount of chocolate cake today. You clearly have two very proud parents. Um, An 18, well, I remember turning 18. It was unfortunately some time ago. I'm quite jealous. <laughs> um, next, David over there in rural Arkansas. It's your birthday today. And I know this because your wife, Tammy, wrote a very amusing email. I thought it was amusing anyway. Tammy described you 
as the most wonderful husband um, and she said that you made up for the fact that she uh, her, or you made up for her rapid descent into the world's worst wife <laughs> I don't think Tammy can be the world's worst wife she's she's written getting a shout out on cracking the cryptic David so I think that Tammy's stock is actually rising in the world um, but anyway I, I did wonder what Tammy had done to think she was the world's wor worst wife but David I hope you have a brilliant birthday today with chocolate cake of course and then lastly to Justin happy birthday Justin your wife Gail wrote to us um, and she also fulsome in her praise of your husbandly worthiness um, and as an example Gail told us that um, I think the three of you for your daughter Alexis is with you are over in Atlantic City at the moment where you are taking care of Alexis so that Gail can attend the teacher uh, the teacher conference um, and and basically you're doing that so that uh, your family can all be close together today which is absolutely wonderful so Justin many happy returns I hope the three of you can celebrate appropriately um, which which will involve of course cake there we go Birthday's done. Let's have a look at Lavender in the Fog and let's see what GDC has in store for us. These are the rules. The grid is partially covered in fog. Placing correct digits reveals clues in the surrounding 3x3 area. Digits an equal distance from the centre of a lavender line or a lavender zipper line sum to the digit in the middle of that line. So let's draw in. Let's pick. Oh, I haven't even got. Let's imagine that was a lavender line. Uh, digits an equal distance so this would be the center of the line obviously uh, so if this was a nine if that was I don't want to put nine in in case it's correct in that position because it will clear fog that I don't deserve to clear so let's lo go low digits if this was a nine then those two squares sum to nine and those two squares sum to nine because the cells an equal distance apart um, or an equal distance from the middle have to sum to the middle digit so that is how I think zipper lines work. Um, all zipper lines are five cells long and only move orthogonally and can't share cells with other zipper lines. So orthogonal, um, just to make, uh, hang on, let me just check. I've not missed out any rules. So what does that mean? Um, all zipper lines only move orthogonally. What that means is that the, the, the zipper lines are not doing this. So an orthogonal connection from cell to cell is one that crosses an edge. One that crosses the diagonal or this point at the vertex of a cell, that's not an orthogonal movement from cell to cell. So that there aren't going to be any diagonal movements in our zipper lines. Um, digits separated by a white dot are consecutive. So that I can see a white dot emerging beneath the fog here. And I can hear Maverick has just taken off. Maverick. How we miss you, Maverick. Um, anyway, yeah, so these, these digits are consecutive. So if this was a one, this would have to be a two. And digits separated by a black dot. Now we can't see any black dots, but let's imagine there was a black dot joining these two cells. Um, they are going to be in a one to two ratio, which means one digit will be double the other. So if this was two, this could be four or one. One because two is double one, four because four is double two. And not all dots are given, so that that is a that is a part of a rule that I'm not sure whether we're going to dispense with that at some point it's basically allaying anyone's fears so imagine this was a two four pair but there was no black dot that's absolutely fine you were just being told positive information basically about cells which do have a, a black dot separating them do have a go the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual but now I get to play let's get cracking now the great thing about fog of war we talked about this the other day is that you're basically directed exactly about where to start the puzzle. It must be here, mustn't it? There's nothing else to go on. So what do we know? We can we can draw in. Um, well, in fact, we can draw in the whole of this line. It now occurs to me because you can see the lavender line definitely goes into this cell and it goes into this cell from this direction as well. So this must be a vertex. And then we can see it's also going into these two cells. Now, the center of the line is now here. Right. What does that mean? <laughs> um, 
Uh, that's actually beautiful. <laughs> it's a really beautiful beginning. Okay, that's a one. Because these are consecutive digits and this is the higher of the two, isn't it? So, so if these are consecutive, but these two digits have to add up to this digit, imagine this was a nine, this will be an eight, and that has to be a one. It doesn't matter how you do it. This, this must always be a one. That's absolutely gorgeous. It's such a simple idea. I mean, this, oh, these constructors are just brilliant. Now, okay, so now we get to draw in that sort of situation, do we? Um, right, what does that mean? How does this line? Well, this one of one of these two cells has to be the middle of the line. That feels right, doesn't it? Uh, this, this, this is beautiful. This is beautiful as well. This is absolutely gorgeous setting. Right, watch this. If this line does this, how could that be true? How could it be true? It can't be true because, because we now would know that this square is the highest digit on the line, obviously. It's the sum that everything else is summing to. But this cell, oh, that, that cell, this cell here, must be half then of this digit. But if this is half this digit, what's that digit? It's got to be the same as that. So imagine this was eight. This would be four, but then these two cells have to add up to eight. So this would also, this would be the same number. Isn't that beautiful? That, that is absolutely gorgeous. It's so simple and yet elegant. Right, so that means that this, well, we don't know, do we actually? It could go there or it could go here, which is interesting. Um, but we do know that that's the middle of the line. Okay. Uh, and it goes either there or there. Sorry, I'm, I realise I'm just corpsing here. I'm just trying to understand what that means. I know about the line. I mean, black dots. Ah, OK, before we get to black dots, where is nine in this box? I don't know the answer to that, but surely one of these things, one of the things about a zipper line is you can never they're, they're They're a bit like remote arrows, aren't they? You can never put a nine in this cell, for example, because this cell would have to be at least 10 and normal Sudoku rules are applying, so that's not going to work. So nine must be in one of the totally digits. I'm wondering whether it's about, um, I'm wondering whether it's about fives, sevens and nines in this box, because five, seven and nine, you can never put on a black dot because if you think about the doubled or halved versions of five, seven, and nine, you'll find none of them are Sudoku digits. Now there must be an odd digit on this, in this domino because it's a consecutive pair, but there can only be one of five, seven, and nine on there. There's none of five, seven, and nine in those squares. So there's at least two of five, seven, and nine. Ooh, no, this is, this is, sorry, this is not, I think, a very productive way of thinking about this. What about, ah, nearly. Well, okay, I was then thinking about the secret. Now, the secret is something I tell only my very favorite people. Uh, but of course, if you're watching this video 14 minutes in, you definitely deserve to know the secret. I'm sure you probably already know it. Um, just don't let on to anybody you don't like. The secret is that any complete box of a Sudoku, any complete row, any complete column, by the rules of Sudoku, incorporates the digits one to nine once each. Now, if you add up those digits, you get 45. Now, the reason I'm just thinking about that is that 45 is divisible by 3. 
and it occurs to me that a zipper line is divisible by 3. The contents of a zipper line must be divisible by 3 because, I mean, imagine this is x. We know those two add up to x and these two add up to x. So the line overall sums to 3x, which is obviously divisible by 3. Now, what that means... What that means is... Oh, actually, that means lots of things. That does mean lots of things. That means wherever this line goes for its next, for its last cell, that cell has to be itself divisible by three. Because, um, because the whole line is divisible by three. So if we were to, hang on, let me use colors for a moment. So we know all of those squares together must be divisible by 3 because this line individually is divisible by 3 and this line is divisible by 3. So all those 10 cells are divisible by 3. But we also know 45 is divisible by 3. So that those cells are divisible by 3. So the only way that these can be divisible by 3 and all of those can be divisible by 3 is if this one itself is divisible by 3. The problem is I don't know where, the, where this last cell is. It could be here. But wherever it is... There's, um, there's that sort of profile going on. Now, right, so what we could do here, well, we can't actually, no, that's not true. You can't put nine on it, can you? Because nine, nine is going to be, a, um, nine is then going to have to contribute to the total of this. So actually we've got three or six in one of these two positions. Right. OK, so we can do maths on this. So that means that the total of the 10 cells in green that I've now highlighted is either 48 or 51. And that means that basically represents three times the sum of those two digits, doesn't it? Because these are, if this was X and this was Y, for example, we know that the total of the 10 cells is 3X plus 3X plus 3Y. So if we divide if we divide 48 uh, by 3, we get 16. So these two squares would then have to be a 7, 9 pair. And if this is 51, we get 17. When did we divide 51 by 3? And then these would have to add up to 17. Right. So, OK, we already knew one of these was a 9, but we now know that the other digit is very high as well, which is not very surprising. Right, right, but the other thought I was having here Ah, this is so beautiful. This is so simple, and yet this is the sort of puzzle that I think could make Sudoku like mainstream in schools because it's it's just simple relationships between numbers expressed in the most exquisite way. Right, I've said a zipper line is divisible by three. What about a black dot, those two digits on a black dot? Well, they also, the sum of those digits is divisible by three because one of these is double the other. So if one of them is x, the other one's 2x, and the sum of the digits is 3x. So that means that this domino is also, the sum of these two squares is divisible by 3. Um, because we, we know the whole box is divisible by 3, this element is divisible by 3, and this element is divisible by 3. So to, for that to be true, this element must be divisible by 3. Well, let me ask you then, how can this be a 9? If this is a 9, this has to be from... In order for these two cells together to have a 0 remainder when divided by 3, This, if this is 9, this has to be 3 or 6. But if this is 3 or 6 and this is 9, that's 3 or 6 on the black dot, and that means that's 3 or 6, and all those cells would have to be 3, 6, and they can't have 3 cells in Sudoku made up of only 2 different digits. So that is telling us 
that this is not 9. That's the first thing it's telling us. It's also telling us this is 9 because we knew that one of the peaks was 9. So that zipper is... Uh, oh, well, no, that's fine, isn't it? That's fine. Because that means this is 8 by the maths of the line. And... And if, oh, <laughs> okay, and if that's eight, I can now deduce the value of this, which is seven. And, okay, so now, okay, let's get, so now, now this digit or this digit is three. Actually, can I now see what's under the fog here? I can't quite tell <laughs> if, well, no, that, that should have been revealed when, when this digit went in. Let's just get rid of the fog here. Actually, I'm going to have to get rid of the green as well because I can't see. Yes, look, there's no there's no uh, lavender line in here. So this is not right. This is not right. The line. Oh, in fact, we can see the line's gone down here now. Um, so that means that this square. Um, well, that we know that that's three or six by the logic that we've been doing. And therefore, um, we can presumably fill in the rest of this line. Where is um, well, the opposite of this square is going to be in this position, isn't it? These two squares have to add up to seven, so that can't be six because that would be one, so that must be three, <laughs> and that must be four, and now this can't be this must be a two because it must be well that's three in the box oh this is just getting filled now that's five because five and two add up to seven and that's a something a six ah that that to me was one of the most beautiful openings of fog of war i've ever seen that is just beautiful right and now we've got a problem at the bottom because the well let me show you what i'm seeing there those go down. Well, they can't join up because these are the two ends of the line. So <laughs> we'd have to have that or something, and that's that's a branching zipper line. So that's got to go that way. That's got to go that way. Right, and that means that's the middle of that line, and that's the middle of that line. Oh, no, I see how this is working. Right, okay. Now, remember what we said before. Where does 9 go in terms of zipper lineage, never, never in the cells that aren't the peak of the zipper line. So that's got to be a nine in this box by Sudoku. Um, oh, I can assume this one goes here because it doesn't turn. It's only moving orthogonally. Sorry, that's a very straightforward deduction, isn't it? And this one is the same. Hmm, okay. Ah, yeah, okay, sorry, this is obvious, and I'm just, I'm being a bit slow. I'm not used to zipper lines yet. Where is 8 in this box? And the answer is, I don't know exactly, but I can see it's not in these squares by Sudoku, and it can't be on this line, because then this would be a 9 and it would clash. So I think it's got to be in one of those two squares, which means that this must be an 8-1 pair with wherever the 1 is on, on the other side of the line. And that cell must be a 9. Which means that one of these is a 1 to, to complement our 8. So 9 is now in one of these squares by Sudoku. And... Oh, no. Well, okay... This this domino now doesn't have one, two, three, or four in it. So the minimum digits I could put into those two squares would be five and six. This is again it's very simple but beautiful. So so what is this total digit then? It's not nine, it's not eight. So it must be seven because the minimum digits I can put into these two squares, which form the sums, if you like, to add up to this number must include at least a six so that must be a seven i think so it makes you doubt yourself so this 
well, now this must be 5 and 6, mustn't it? Because it can't be anything else. We can't put any other digits on this line that are going to work. Right, and this line is now extending here. And this must be a 1-2 pair to complement the 5 and 6 to give us our 7. And now this square can't be a 1. And if that... Ah! No, it can't be a 1. So that means this square's a 1, which means it goes with 8 there. That doesn't clear any fog because it didn't deserve to. Um, that square looks restricted to me. Yes. Uh, well, yes, I think so. Um, because we know these two squares add up to 9, but they're not 1, 8 or 2, 7, and they can't be 3, 6, look. So this must be a 4, 5 pair, and that's a 5. So I think that has to be 4. I think that has to be 5. So that's 5, that's 6. It's very disconcerting when you fill in fog puzzles and they don't clear the fog. These, none of this is clearing fog because... Oh! Oh, I've seen something exciting. We're definitely getting a 3 in the corner today by virtue of the bottom row. <laughs> I don't know where the three is going yet, but look, we've got three and eight to place and one of them will be in a corner. So we will be singing today. Hang on, what's going on though now? I mean, th this is going here. I think, I'm almost saying I've got, I must have made a mistake here because everything is, there's no more lines. <laughs> I'm not sure what I've done wrong here. Um, let me just fill in some Sudoku. 378. 456. Well, these, these can't get resolved. Oh, of course. <laughs> okay, sorry. Because, because of the nature of the lines, it's 6 plus 1. Right, okay, 1. That's got to be two, and that's that has revealed another line, right? You can't put nine on a, on anywhere but the middle of the line. We've learned that already, so that's a nine. We've got a we've got a zippity doodah thing going on here, haven't we? This goes up that way, that way, so its middle is there, um, and these two squares are at least three, four. So this is at least five. It doesn't feel very powerful, actually. Um, how do we do this then? Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Two is up there. Two can make no appearances. On this line at all because that two sees that square so none of the none of the addition along this line can ever involve a two right okay so how big is this 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 addition thing this sum I am going to claim that it can't be as low as six even because these two squares, which, is, yeah, the minimum these could be would be a 3-4 pair. That's the minimum they can be. And these two squares are what adds up to this square. So this is at least a 7. Um, oh, no, I see. I know. Oh, this is gorgeous. Again, it's so simple. It's simple arithmetic. But it, it's taken me a moment to see it. Right. So what are these digits? Well, they must involve a 3 in the sum, because if this was 4 plus 5, this would equal 9, which we know it can't do. So there must be a 3. In, well, in fact, I now know that that's a 3. So that is a 3, and therefore that's an 8. That's 7. Um, this is a 4 by mathematics, and... That's three in the corner, that's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, right, that's a five. That's a something. Six, I want to say. Oh, that's quite good. Okay, because six plus one, I know, equal. We've got more revealing of stuff here. One goes over there. What are those two digits then? They are seven and four. Let's put that in. These digits, we can get rid of the pencil mark, I think. We need two, six, and eight, so let's put those in. 
I'm not going to get any feedback until we can clear some fog, I think. That can't be one, though, because of this one. So I think we must have to use this line, although we can't see where it goes. Um, is it? Oh, hang on. I want. I was going to say, is it where the nine goes? Because that's been very useful so far. Nine can't go at the start of a zipper line. Can't go there because that, that that's a nine. It's the only place you can't put nine here because the consecutive digit would be eight, and that doesn't work. So I think that's got to be nine. It's not going to clear the fog though. Um, hmm. Here's an interesting thought about how this line goes. So you can see that the middle of this line, the, the, which is the, the digit we're summing to, is either there or there by orthogonal movements. Now I don't think it can be there because that digit can't be six, seven, eight or nine. So the maximum size of this digit is five. But if this is five and is the sum, these two squares have, no, well, the point is that these two squares include at least a five because they don't include one, two or four. So the minimum sum we could have is a six and that must be up here. So the line goes up there and this is the middle of it. And this digit is at least a six, but isn't a six. So that digit is at least a seven. Okay. There's a five on this dot now for what that's worth. The nature of any white dot, any consecutive pair is it will, it will include an odd digit and an even one, but it's the odd digit that's interesting there because one, nine, seven, and three can't be the odd digit on this dot. So it's got five on it. Um, in fact, that means it's either four, five, or four, six, or so four. You know what I mean. It's either four, five, or five, six. That can't be six. Um, okay, well, that's good, isn't it? Actually, because now, yeah, now the minimum digits on here are three, could be in one of these positions, but the next lowest digit we can put on this on this line is one two three four five here six is seven so this can't be seven that's at now at least eight now what does that mean <laughs> hmm don't know uh Oh, goodness me. This is outrageous. This is outrageous, GDC. You have made me do Sudoku in your Sudoku puzzle. That square's a naked single. I think. I'm going to just double check that. But if we check what this could be, it can't be one, two. I think it could be an is three. But it can't be four. It can't be five. It can't be six. It can't be seven, eight. And we can't put, it can't be nine. I think that's a three. I think. Yes, although that didn't do very much, did it? So three is in one of these two cells. Okay. So how has that helped us? Or has it not? Five must be in one of those two squares. Um, is it more Sudoku? <laughs> I fear it might be, you know. One, two, three... Yeah, okay. That square by Sudoku is four or six. So that's a four, five, six triple in this box. So these squares are from two, seven, and eight. Oh, nearly, nearly. That can't be two, look. So this is a very big number. Yes, and that's telling us how, the num how this moves. Because now, if this went vertical, that digit has to add up with this digit to equal this digit. And that means this has to be a one or a two, which it can't be. 
So that must turn that way, and then orthogonal movement requires it goes there. Right, so this cell is a 1 or a 2, which is very, very annoying. And this square is either a 5 or a 6. It's still... Oh, it's but it can't be 5. That's beautiful. So this is 6. And therefore, this is 9. Look, because, the, because we know there's a 5 on this dot, that has to be 6, I think. Ah, oh, this is absolutely brilliant. It's brilliant. It's quite brilliant. So now this... Okay, so now this becomes a 4-5 pair. This becomes a 6. I don't know if I know the order of those. Ah, but this square is 5 or 7. Okay, that's slightly surprising. So that's 5, 7 or 8. We've got another zipper line emerging from the fog here. Ah, this square's a 1 or a 2 in the corner by Sudoku. 6 comes out of this square. Nine comes out of this square. One, two pair in row three. Um, hmm. Three and four have to be in these cells. The zipper line that we've got emerging here goes there. Which might be important. Um, wow, that's, okay, this is very difficult. I'm not even sure I'm right about it, actually. No, I am right about it. Yeah, okay. So we can see that this cell here, we've got to extend the zipper line. Now, I don't think it can go there. And the reason I say that is that these two digits then, the 4, 5 or 6 we've got in this square, which would be the middle of the zipper line, and this square are too close together. So the next square on the zipper, in order to make, is going to be the sum of this digit and what's going to have to be a 1 or a 2. Well, there's nowhere for the zipper to get a 1 or a 2 in its next position. So I think it has to go there. And then we know that's the highest digit, don't we? So I was, what I was going to do is to take 3 out of there, because obviously 3 is smaller than 4 or 5. Now, <laughs> has that helped us? I don't know, actually. We could say that... So the next digit after this is either there, where it would have to be a 3, and then these two squares would be, well they could, yeah it would have to be a 3 and they could either way round it would work, or here, which would only work, ah that's it, right got you. Wow. Okay, this this line can't go here because then we then we have to think about how we make those two digits add up to this one. And you can see the options. The only option that would work is a two five pair, but that makes this add up to seven. So this is five. This is seven, and that square is broken. Absolutely broken. Oh dear. This is this is such a clever puzzle. I'm really surprised by this. Now now that has to be a three. It's the only thing that will work. <laughs> Everything gets cleared. Um, oh, so it does bounce back over there now, which is sort of surprising to me. That's... Ooh, hang on, what's going on here? This, this square and that square add up to this number. But this is at least a 3, because it sees a 1-2 pair here. So that can't be a 6, that's for sure. So this is a 4-5 pair, that's a 6. Um, this square... Well, I want, to, I want to... I feel like it can't be a 4 for some reason, but actually I'm not so sure. If it was a 4, you'd have two 4s on the line. And 
That would that might work actually. Oh, you know, it's much simpler than that, isn't it? Hang on. In fact, I think it. I think it is that. If that's four, yeah, it doesn't work. If this is four, you get a seven as the the, the sum, and this is five, so this has to be two, which it simply can't be. So this is five. The total is eight. This is four and then you have to have two fours on the line to make it add up and this is seven now okay so this is seven this is eight which means this is one by maths that's a two this is a something a uh, five um these two squares are now not eight anymore they're two and seven but they d that's not resolved i don't think this is a three eight pair which is resolved so that's three that's eight this has become a two and it was right it cleared the fog we can't put nine at the tip of a zipper line we have learned this 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 these zipper lines are absolutely brilliant aren't they they really are this is a great innovation you can already tell just from what gdc has been able to do with this puzzle how good this new rule set is four five eight you know when i did the the other gdc puzzle in for my holiday stash I think I had exactly this experience, which is that these puzzles are just fantastic. Six, seven, nine here. Okay, so so nine can't go in the middle of the line. Be interesting to know. Well, the line, this is interesting as well. Look, how does this go? It's got to go down. If it goes across here, these two squares are adding up to that and they would add up to at least 13. So that's got to drop. And, okay, that's probably not the most brilliant deduction ever. But then, then the next line has got to, get, got to be here because we're adding this digit to something to arrive at at least six, aren't we? Well, at least, actually at least seven, I suddenly see, because if that's six, that must be at least seven. So we must come down here. In fact, oh no, it's could, it could still be little. It could still be the four with a three, I think. Oh no, hang on, four and three, I'm not adding the right things to the right things. I'm getting good view. No, that's huge. No, sorry, it's, yeah. So A, we have to come down here. That's first, the first deduction. Now we're adding these two digits together to get this number. So that must be eight. That can't be anything else. Okay, that's good. So now we know we're adding up to nine, which means these two squares add up to nine, which means this is not a one. Uh, this is not a nine. Um, so these are either two seven or three six. We've 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 run out of zipper lines now, actually. So I'm slightly surprised about that because I didn't feel like the Sudoku was nearly finished, but maybe it is. I mean, we've got to put an odd digit on there, which is either th well, the odd digit you can see actually has to be in the top position. Because this square sees all the odd digits in the puzzle. It sees 3 and 7 in the row. So that is a 3 or a 7. Because it can't be 1, 5 or 9. If this is 7, this is 6 or 8. Which it's not. So that is 3. Lovely. That's absolutely lovely again. So that's 2. And that's going to do it. Look. So that's 2. That's 7. That's 6. This is not 8 anymore. This is, in fact, is a six because it sees the other things it could have been. And in this column, that must be a four by the fact it can't be a two. And I've not put in seven, so that's got to be seven. That's doing the seven and the two over here. The four does the four and the five over here. This is brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. I don't know how I'm going to be able to come up with the name of, of a puzzle or the video that's going to do this justice because it's as I said before it's the sort of thing that I think anybody who tries it will just fall in love with um, two five pair that's two that's five so that's five that's four that's four that's seven that's one that's three and that's done it absolutely gobsmackingly brilliant GDC um, there's not much else to say 
It's a brilliant new innovation. It was fog of war, and the beauty around this box and how it resolved was stunning. And there were other stunning steps as well. The way you could keep determining how the, the zipper line must grow. That's as good a you know that's as good a puzzle in terms of just elegance as you will ever see. Loved it. Take a bow. Brilliant. Let me know in the comments if you had a go. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind, and especially when they're kind to GDC. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.